Our first witness is going to be Andrew. You're going to have to pronounce it. Ruzak, huh? Rosky. Okay. Well, I appreciate uh, you pronouncing it for me. I'm terrible with names. Rosky. Who is a, he's an adjunct professor at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. Uh, professor Rosky teaches courses on innovation and is founder of the Andrew Rosky Companies. He works with organizations seeking growth through the creation and introduction of new ideas. Um, he's a best-selling author and an expert on creativity and innovation. And he earned his MBA from Loyola University in Chicago and has an undergraduate degree in International Business Affairs from Bradley University. Welcome. And uh, to kind of explain to you, you, got, you all have five minutes and try to keep it within that uh, if possible. Great. Mr. Thank Rosky. You. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Gray's Ranking Member Velasquez, members of the committee, uh, good afternoon. My name is Andrew Rosge, and I am a lecturer at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. I'm also uh, an advisor to organizations on innovation and growth and an active angel investor in startups. And pleased to be here today to provide testimony for today's hearing. As you know, small businesses are instrumental to our economy. As we heard, they employ 50 percent of the private sector workers and are responsible for 60 percent of new jobs. I've outlined several factors in my written testimony. However, for now, I'd like to focus really on two principles. Uh, the first is that not all entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs for the same reasons. Uh, for some, entrepreneurship is a choice. They want to work for themselves or uh, they've got a problem that they're looking to solve. For others, entrepreneurship is a necessity. They are typically the victims of job loss and start businesses to create income for themselves. And for others still, entrepreneurship is their destiny. These are members of multi-generation family businesses. And as their paths differ, so too do their motivations, and these motivations are instrumental to keep in mind as we create good policy. Second, beyond their origins, uh, it is important also to distinguish between small business owners and high potential entrepreneurs. Uh, these two groups differ significantly in their skills, their funding needs, their challenges, and the social networks that they need to succeed. Um, so what are the differences and what are the implications? Well, let me just share a quick story with you. Ray Kroc, who we all know is a legendary founder of McDonald's, or the one who grew that business, uh, was a high potential entrepreneur. Uh, creates today one and a half million employees, and several million employees have worked for that company for many, many decades. The McDonald brothers, on the other hand, uh, who invented the concept in San Bernardino, California in 1940, were small business owners. Their goal was to sell hamburgers and shakes and to do it really, really fast. Uh, while the McDonald brothers saw the potential of their idea, they wanted it to remain a small business. Ray, on the other hand, also saw the potential, but he had aspired to grow the business. Uh, ultimately, Ray became frustrated with that, and so he acquired the brothers and built what we know today as McDonald's. The differences between the McDonald brothers and Ray Kroc go well beyond their aspirations, however. The small business owners and high potential entrepreneurs also differ in their skills, their challenges, their funding needs, and their social networks. First, in terms of skills, typically a small business is concerned with uh, creating income for themselves, as I mentioned earlier, and therefore leveraging their own skills. High potential entrepreneurs are really in the business of creating businesses. So in the United States, 10 percent of entrepreneurs, for example, create 30 percent of our new businesses. 20 percent of our entrepreneurs create over half of our new businesses. These are a different group, and these are what I call our high potential entrepreneurs. Second, they have very different challenges. Uh, small businesses primarily are concerned generally with cash flow and therefore are typically interested in lowering their tax burdens. Uh, high potential entrepreneurs, on the other hand, are interested in really scaling their businesses. So their biggest challenges are A, attracting capital, uh, and B, attracting and hanging, hanging on to talent. Uh, so high potential entrepreneurs can only hope someday to pay taxes. Uh, third, they really differ in the sources of capital. Uh, small businesses typically seek, seek as we know, uh, funding from banks and microloans, the majority of their funding from there, while high potential entrepreneurs rarely set foot in banks, uh, primarily because they have no collateral other than their dream and their vision that we know. So while small businesses really trade on their collateral and interest, high potential entrepreneurs trade on capital gains and equity with their, with their investors. And finally, they really maintain different social networks, uh, whereas small businesses typically network locally as members of their chambers of commerce and other organizations. High potential entrepreneurs typically are networking globally uh, through venture accelerators and incubators and the like. So while vo both are vital to our recovery, certainly small business owners and high potential entrepreneurs, because of these differences, uh, my recommendation is that we really think about these entities and manage them uh, differently. Uh, why is that the case? Uh, as you look at high potential entrepreneurs, for example, they're generally backed by venture capital. And venture-backed businesses are more resilient in economic downturns and more prosperous typically over the long term. Uh, moreover, they have exponential economic impact. For example, if you look at the investments made in high potential businesses, although it's only 2%, 0.2%, excuse me, of GDP, 
the revenue they generate is equivalent to 21 percent of U.S. GDP. So very, very uh, high performing companies. So generally for these reasons, the differences in their skills, their needs, their funding requirements, their social networks that make them succeed, you know, my recommendation is that we need to focus just as much on these high potential entrepreneurs uh, as we do on the typical small business challenges. So, thank you. Thank you, Professor Roski.